What's up guys, it's your boy Diamond. Welcome back to Diamond Up Cuz. Before we get into the video, I want y'all to like, comment, and subscribe to join the ride and be with your boy Don. Now first things first, I want to get on with the New York Knicks. A. Hey, start off with them, bro. Trey Young, bro, has been killing that team. They have been killing them on the offensive end and defensive end. And there has been barely any production on the offensive end by the New York Knicks. And the only thing that's being productive on the offensive end is Derrick Rose. Derrick Rose has had a good game, 30 points, but they still lost. Julius Randle has been horrible this series. And um, RJ Barrett hasn't been very good this series either. Now, another one thing that I've noticed is the reason why they're playing this bad is because DeAndre Hunter. DeAndre Hunter is locking up Julius Randle on the perimeter. And one thing why is because DeAndre Hunter is a good perimeter defender. And also, DeAndre Hunter is very physical. He can match that physicality of Julius Randle at any given point. And that's really messing that team up. And another player, I think, who has been playing good defense against Julius Randle is Danilo Gallinari, who hasn't really been known for his defensive um, uh, defensive abilities. I mean, he had some good defensive years, but he hasn't really been known for that. You know, he's drawing fouls, doing the little things to help get the ball turned over to them and get better offensive, uh, get better offensive uh, opportunities. And I want to give props to Nate McMillan for for picking up on this, which I picked up too, is that the New York Knicks do not have what you would say a talented offensive team. You know, they're good at defense, like they're a very good defensive team, but they're not good at on the offensive side of the ball. And most of your offensive production comes from Julius Randle and R.J. Barrett, you know, and sometimes from Derrick Rose. But when you have two of those offensive product, like very effective uh, offensive productors out who are who are not playing well, that's going to mess up the entire team. That's going to lose so much abilities to shot create, play make, all that, all those stuff, all that stuff is going to be hindered and destroyed. And really, that's what's really hurting the the Knicks and I'm I'm curious to see what's gonna happen next you know because a Knicks fans were were hype I'm just saying they were hype to be back in the playoffs you know and if you haven't been in the playoffs for a very long time and you just get in now a hey, props to you especially for Atlanta who haven't been into the playoffs for 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 an extended amount of years they've been playing very well you know the Knicks you know they they're playing I don't know. I don't know how to say they're, how they're playing. I guess they're playing pretty decent, you know, without Julius Randle and and R.J. Barrett playing well. But it doesn't look good for the, for the Knicks right now. And if any Knicks fans are in the watching this video, I want y'all to leave a comment on how you feel about this Knicks situation. Is this the end of the line for y'all, or can y'all turn it around and maybe even make this a a six, maybe even a seven game series? Now I want to talk about the Celtics versus Knicks. As you know, as I've said many times on the channel, I'm 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 a I'm a Nets fan. I've been a Nets fan for a very long time, and you know, when we're up 2-0, you know, we just had a dominating performance. You know, I'm feeling good. You know, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that was me for the first like few minutes of the first few minutes of the game. We were we were killing the 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 Celtics. The Celtics weren't were putting up good shots. Boom. Jason Tatum somehow turns up and goes for 50. Jason Tatum puts up 50 points. And don't get me wrong, Harden and KD had very good games. You know, very good games. But unfortunately, Kyrie didn't have good games. And I feel like about 80-something points of the 119 that we scored or something like that, most of that was from KD, Kyrie, and Harden. So... Yeah, nobody really, nobody else really showed up um, for that game, and I was, I was kind of, I was kind of sad, you know, because uh, I saw this happening. I saw this could happen, but to me, but one thing that I said to myself, and what many, many other people have said, is that the offensive rebounds and Jason Tatum are going to be the factors of winning the series and pop, and pos winning games and possibly winning the series for the Celtics. You know, as because the Nets, they do not have good offensive rebounding. 
DeAndre Jordan isn't the same player he was back in Lob City. He wasn't. A, he's not the same player. And I feel like that's really going to shoot us in the foot, especially when we're away. We're not playing at home. We're not playing in Brooklyn. And, you know, that's going to hurt us. And um, we're most like. And I feel. I still feel the Nets are going to win the the series. It's going to be very close. It's going to be closer than expected. You know, I feel like it's going to be closer than expected. And one thing that um, I thought of is that we're most likely going to go against the Bucks. And, you know, the Bucks are a very good offensive rebounding team. And, you know, they're, they're going to, if we're not a good offensive rebounding team and they're a good re offensive rebounding team, we not gonna, we're probably not going to win that series. And I've come to terms with that, you know, not unless Miami pulls, pulls off one of the greatest comebacks of all time. It's possible. But if any Nets or Celtics fans are watching this, go into the comments below and debate it out. Who's going to win the series? And then if who's going to win the series? What's going to happen to the future of each team? And um, now, we're going to talk about the Clippers and Mavericks. Hey, you know, the first few minutes of that Mavericks game was actually like... I was actually thinking the Mavericks were going to take a 3-0 lead. Like, I wasn't watching all the games at one time. It's kind of hard to focus on one game at the one time. But I've seen, like, the little, like, corner thing. And, you know, I'm like, dang, the Mavericks up by this much already in the first quarter in, like, the first three minutes. So I was like, you know what? The Mavericks might win. I was mistaken. The uh, Clippers came back and they won the game, you know. In the beginning, Luka was looking unstoppable. Tim Hardaway Jr. was looking very good from three. Chris Porzingis was putting up shots, hitting them. Everybody was eating. But I'm kind of glad Ty Lue noticed this, is that you cannot have Zubak on Luka. You know, it took two games and about four four to five minutes of the first quarter to realize Zubak cannot guard Luka. What can I say? But at least they made that adjustment now so that it is possible for them to come back and win. You know, to win this series. Um, and that really opened up things for Kawhi and Paul George. Paul George had a very good game. I'll get onto that in a few minutes or a few seconds. And Kawhi, you know, that took off pressure of him because I, as I said in the uh, video before, Kawhi cannot be playing 40 minutes while trying to guard Luka. You know, that with them taking Zubat and all that stuff off of him has really opened up the floor and made it easier, made Paul George and every, basically everybody's job easier. You know, even though Luka had like, what, 40 points, he needs to hit his free throws. I mean, that might not made a difference, but as a player of his caliber and a player of his status, he needs to hit his free throws on me. Now, Paul George. A. Paul George, you had a very good game today. Very good game. But you have to win this series to earn my respect back on me. That am I asking for too much? You have to win this series for me to gain for me to gain respect of you of, again. You have to. You know? I mean, you're you're already a very good NBA player, but you gotta prove yourself in the playoffs to me again. And shoot, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready to see how this all turns out and if the uh how all these games turn out. If you have are have enjoyed this video, remember to like, comment, and subscribe to join the ride and be with your boy Dime. And um, shout out to shout out to everybody who played well today. Shout out to everybody who played well yesterday and everything like that. And um, yeah, I'll see y'all in the next video. God bless. Peace out. 100. Yeah.